All right, folks, today I'm going to show you how to make this log rocker right here. This is made of sweet gum and cherry. So, yeah, let me show you what I've already gotten started with. Well, I'm making a pair of rockers, so I've got to get uh, duplicates of everything. So I'm starting off with, I've got four uh, logs cut at 40 inches. And I've got a, uh, I need a dozen of these. I think I got a little bit more than that. Uh, cut up of these and these are at 22 inches and um, I've got to make four of them that have a uh, tenon on on each end and uh, Then I'm gonna make the other eight with a tenon just on one end So as you can see, I got a tenon already put on both ends now. Well, I'm sure many of you are wondering, why do I use sweet gum? Well, the answer lies behind me. We've got, uh, I don't know, between my family, 40, 50 acres or so. But anyway, there's plenty of sweet gum back here. And sweet gum is worthless. There is nothing you can do with it. You cannot make lumber out of it. Uh, about the only thing I know anybody is using sweet gum for is to make railroad ties. The problem with sweet gum is if you try to cut it up for lumber, as it dries out, the wood will twist, it will warp, it will change all kind of shapes. But if you leave it still in log form, it will not uh, change at all. So you could see when I was using the, um, the tenon cutter uh, of how well the uh, the sweet gum works. I mean you can really shave it down really fast and easy You don't have to worry about knots You know if you were trying to do that with uh, red oak or white oak and you hit a knot More than likely the uh, the cutter would grab on that knot and it would probably break your arm But you don't have to worry about that on the sweet gum. So uh, a lot of benefits to using sweet gum and uh, You know the wood is very moist So that's the other thing is that as you're cutting it that moist will help uh, keep your blades uh, from getting too hot and dull. But you do have to sharpen that, uh, that residue off uh, periodically as well. And here is my little helper for the day. <laughs> so me and the cat, uh, Kiki Girl, that's her name. We've got all the uh, pieces cut up here. We've got uh, eight of them with just a single uh, tenon on there and then we've got uh four with uh tenons on both ends so now we're ready to start uh doing some other work all right now what i'm about to do is i'm going to outline this rocking chair all the way around on this table and i'm only going to go around the outside the reason i do that is these logs vary from tree to tree and from rocker to rocker so uh, on one rocker, these might be two and a half inches. On the next one, it might be three inches or even four. So what I mainly concerned myself was making an outline all the way on this table. Now, if you don't have a log rocker to do this with, of course, many of you don't, just take a regular rocking chair and you want to go by that outline. So once you make your outline, then you will know the layout of what you need 
for your rocker. So let me go ahead and do the outline of this one. And hopefully this will show up on the uh, video for you, but you can see I've outlined it. There is my outline of the outside of the rocking chair. I have outlined the rocker portion and I've outlined the uh, front side and of course the arms. So just by looking at this template here, it looks just like any other rocking chair. So that's the main thing you wanna focus on. You don't have to worry about doing both sides of the rocker because I did the back side. So if, as long as I use this back side as my main uh, starting point, it doesn't matter how wide this log is. I just wanna make sure that when I put my, use this as a template, that I always stay with this back side of this log. So, uh, you know, you can't say, I couldn't tell you, well, hey, just cut up some logs 22 inches and that will always work. Generally, they're gonna be about 18 to 22, depending on what you're using, but those logs are gonna protrude down into here so that it'll give you something to screw into. And of course, the diameter of this log can be different than any other. So they're all gonna change. You know, that's the thing about cutting a tree is you don't know what diameter you're gonna end up with. The diameter of this log will also change. So that's why you have to stay with a certain focus point being this is your outside to stay with. This is your outside to stay with. This is your outside to stay with. And of course your rocker parts. So as long as you keep your logs on the inside of it. So as long as you keep your logs to the inside of these lines, when you measure the length that you want to cut them to, everything's going to be fine. Doesn't matter how wide this log turns out to be. So now I'll give you an example. Okay, so what I've got now is I cut this log down to 38 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down to the point that you see where the rocker will go into this log and you can see that it's coming out over here. So what I'm going to do is take this saw and just make me a mark so I know where to cut it and now I can go over to a, a band saw and cut it uh, without having to do it by hand. Okay, you can see that I have got this shaped the same as the uh, the bottom of the rocker here, and I am gonna leave this back up this direction, probably about a quarter of an inch. And the reason I wanna do that is I want that rocker to protrude through here and not the wood of this log. This log will shrink in time as well, so uh, what we're gonna do here in just a moment is we're gonna cut a trough for that rocker to fit in. But for now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and mark my center cuts or drill points for the uh, tenon and mortise to join together. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, get rid of this cat that's aggravating me here just a second. Boy, this is no place for a cat, but man, you try to get something done without a, with a nosy cat around, you'll be here all day long. All right, so what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to drill my points for my mortise and tenon. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna to have to do now is uh, get my mortise and tenon uh, joints all lined up. So uh, I have marked on the back side of this log here where I'm needing to uh, put my drill point at. So what I will do is I will go to the... Well, I eventually gave up on trying to make this point across while having the cat around, but I will make it clear here in just a few minutes. So don't worry, I'm not gonna leave this step out. Now I wanna show you a little trick that I did when I made this one here. If you notice, this arm has a twist to it so that as you get in the chair, it's these arms are moving outward so that as you get in it's more of a smooth fit into the chair so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure to turn the log when i put it to mate up to here i'm going to make sure when i make that log right here that i have that log turned the way that i want it to so now what i've done is i have this log the main back log i have it 
lined up with the line that I've drawn earlier. And this log is going to be right at, see that top line there? I'm going to get that log right there at that top line. And now I know where I need to drill the hole for this mortise and tenon. So now we have our first uh, couple of pieces assembled together. So now what I've got to do is take my next piece and line it up with my pencil line and go up here and mount. Uh, now I've got a mark where I want this tenon to uh, join into that next piece. And I don't believe I mentioned it earlier, but the uh, the tenon size I'm using is an inch and a half. The piece that I had uh, the tool out on the drill that I used outside to make these tenons with is an inch and a half, and this bit here is an inch and a half. So uh, anyway, you can see what I've got going on here. I've got to put these two together and then put this one inside of here. And once I do, then I will be able to know what the length is that I need to cut it down here. Okay, now you can tell that I've got the uh, all three pieces here together. And what I've got to do now is get the uh, part ready for this to be cut out. And what I've got going on is that right there will happen. So I could screw this on the outside of here if I wanted to, but what that would do is it would give it the ability to flex back and forth, and that may not hold up. Some of you may want to try it, and you may come up with creative ways to make it happen, but I never have been able to. So what I do is I cut a trough under here and put it in there. Okay, just to show you what I'm talking about with the rocker. I've got it turned up on its side, and this is the rocker piece coming into the front of the, the rocking chair right here. That's what's going into here. Now, what I have done in the past is I have taken a drill and put me a bit on it, take the log and drill me a hole in it, and then put the rocker piece inside of that trough that I have made. But I'm going to try something a little bit different today, and uh, we'll see how that turns out, and I'll let you know. Uh, but, you know, th there's nothing wrong with this system. The good of it is, is you are able to run screws from both sides of the log into this rocker. And, and this has always worked well for me, but I've never been proud of how this turns out right here. It's I've never been able to get that just right. So... Um, anyway, that's why I'm thinking about getting away from that system and trying something a little different today. All right, so what I'm doing now is just laying this uh, piece up here on the top of the logs. And so that I know that I am straight up from these lines, what I have done is taken my square and put it right up to the line all the way around. And then I took my air nailer and I just put one little nail in here. And that's just so that I can get a uh, good stencil on uh, my next step. So now that I have these uh, in place and I check all of my lines, make sure that I am still within all of my lines all the way around this whole framework. Man, I tell you what, it's about to get a whole lot easier on us, folks. We have pretty much done the hardest parts. So what we want to do now is I just want to mark, and I'm going to take this saw here, one of these cheap Harbor Freight saws, and I am just going to cut into that, that bark right along here to give me a mark of where I want the top side of this rocker to sit. I'm going to do it here, and I'm also going to do it here. And uh, what that's going to do is give me a, a mark to go by so that when I go to my next step, it will make more sense here in just a moment. If I could just get this cat to leave me alone today. <laughs> she has made my job so much harder, especially trying to uh, lay this stuff out on the table. She has stayed up here most of the time doing that right there. And then she'll get right in the middle of that rocket chair and just roll around wanting me to pet on her. <laughs> She's pretty, isn't she? All right, let's get back to work. And what I've done now is take a block of wood and put right under 
that rocker so that I was able to make me a mark under there to know how deep I needed to cut this log. And of course I've got the score mark that I made across here. So I'm just gonna make those two points meet. We'll cut across there, cut down through here. And that way I can inlay this uh, rocker down inside this log here. And you can see now how I've got this notched out on both of the logs. And that way I can take the uh, rocker and set it down inside the log and it be recessed. And that way when I bolt through here, uh, it will have a, a good area to grab a hole to and give it plenty of rigidity. And if you don't have a real good uh, bandsaw, you can still use something like uh, like this saw here, that little hand saw that I got uh, at Harbor Freight, I think it's uh, around three or four dollars. And uh, use a chisel to help uh, notch this out a little bit. So you don't have to have fancy tools to do this kind of work. It just takes a little more effort, that's all. Well, I got my holes drilled out and I took these bolts that are way too long. And what I wanna do is just stick them in that hole to keep, uh, keep everything lined up while I'm uh, moving this around until I get ready to bolt this together. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these tenons apart here and I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, Gorilla Glue on those uh, tenons. And what I wanna do is I wanna put just a little bit on this end of the Gorilla Glue and maybe just a tad around this rim here. The reason why is Gorilla Glue will expand and it will want to pull itself back out and ooze out all over these logs and, and uh, really, really look tacky so you want to stay on this back side and let the glue ooze its way until it finally reaches a point that it dries up and can't go all the way out so uh, that's what i'm uh, gonna do now all right what i've done now is i have taken a galvanized screw and i have screwed it in right here and also right here and what that gives me along with having these extra long bolts in here is now I can pick this up and be able to flip it over so that I can put the correct bolts into here. All right, well, I got these bolted in there, and boy, you can really feel how rigid this is now. This is really, uh, really very sturdy. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've got the marks over here on my uh, on my layout. I've got the everything set inside of, uh, of my form that I made here. And I'm going to take this square right at that drawing mark where it's showing where the center of that next hole should be. So what I will do is take my, uh, my bit on the drill and I will drill right to the center of that and uh, do one up there at the end as well. And I, I will be complete with making this entire side. And what I will do is make the entire side for the, uh, the other half of the rocker. Now what you have to keep in mind is that when you make this hole on this side for the, uh, the post to come up this direction, when you make the other side of the rocking chair, everything is on the bottom side, just as the holes are gonna be on the top side of this log, for the other side, you've got to put your holes down on the bottom. So just keep that in mind as you make this, that uh, everything for this one will be reverse for the other half. And uh, it'll make a little more sense here uh, as I go, go forward. Now, unless you are real good with a bandsaw, it is hard to get this to where it has a perfect crown to it and not have some wave the reason you don't want wave is as this rocking chair would rock and if it got to a wavy part, your rocking chair would be like bum, 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 every time you rocked. So what I've got here is I've got this file and I don't know what you call this particular file. Uh, you know, there is a term called bastard file and this is a very aggressive mean type uh, file. So and it's very old, so I, I call this the mean old bastard file. But anyway, I take this mean old bastard file, and what I do is I, I take this at an angle against this uh, rocker. 
And as I drag it across, you can feel it grabbing a hold to the high parts of this uh, rocker and smooth it out. The place that it's gonna ride the most, believe it or not, most of the area that the rocker will run across will be this area right in here. So you really gotta make sure to get that smoothed out. So after I use the uh, mean old bastard file for a while, then I've got a, uh, another file that's not as aggressive. It's a very uh, more of a fine, and I will take it and I will dress this up. I'll just drag it across just like I'm doing this mean old bastard file here. All right, I want to show you a trick that I like to do. It's 40 degrees outside right now, so I take this thermos here, and this is where I store my glue. I keep it in the house, keep it nice and warm, but before I come out to the shop, I put it inside the thermos, close it up, and that way it'll stay warm inside of here. And when I get done using it, I put it back in the thermos and keep it warm for the rest of the day until I need it again. And while we've been talking about glue, let me go ahead and remind you that you must put your glue in this, this joint here and this one here before you uh, bolt this rocker down because once you bolt this down you cannot take that part apart so uh i do not want to put glue in these two pieces here yet this is where the two pieces will come out to connect both halves of the rocking chair i do not want to glue and screw those just yet so uh, what i want to do is do a dry test fit and make sure that everything fits correctly before i glue those in all right, well now what I'm doing is picking out some of my pieces that are going to go along the back side. And what I want to show you is that this log here has a curve to it. And uh, you can really tell it as it's against this straight piece here. You can see the, the curve of that log. So as I would rotate it, that curve, of course, changes. Now what I'm thinking is taking this curve right here this inward curve and use that for the back so uh, that way it'll give you a nice curve setting uh, along your back so before i do anything what i want to do now is go uh, take this and put it into the vise that i have and i'm going to take my log peeler and i am going to peel off some of this bark here to give me a good flat surface to uh to put my back pieces on and again this is one of those things that'll make a little more sense as we go all right that's what i did i took my log peeler draw knife whatever you want to call it and i peeled off this uh bark on this log and again that's going to give me a good curved back so that as you sit in there you will have a nice curved back to it so uh be a pretty, pretty comfortable uh, rocking chair right here. And if this log was straight, you could still, if it, if it didn't have that natural curve, you could still make that curve yourself using your draw knife. You just have to focus a little differently as to as you're drawing it through there. You may want to start in the center and pull. Whereas to, if the log was straight and you wanted to keep it straight, you would start on that end and draw to you. But if you want to make a curve in the center, that's where you want to start is in the center and draw opposite directions till you get it the way you want it. And then you can start drawing all the way across and that way you'll have a smooth feathered edge. All right, as you can see, here is the rocker piece. So that's the bottom side of the chair. And I've taken a log and I put two sides on it that are roughed up and uh, debark and that is going to go right in here and the reason i've got two sides of it debarked is this is where the bottom of the chair will be and this other flat side is for the back of the chair which is going to meet up with this one here that i debarked and i've got this turned the opposite direction against where you can't see it sorry about that but that's the only way i can work with it in this video all right now if you'll see i've got both halves of the rocking chair just put together it's not glued or nailed or anything like that what i want to do now is just kind of do a test rock 
of the rocker and make sure see how it wants to keep going that tells me that i don't have it in a bind now what i want to do now is i want to take it back apart and uh just the backs here because the rest these sides are all glued and screwed this this side and this side is completely glued and screwed but that right there is not attached that's just temporarily in there so i'll take that apart i'll put some glue in each one of these joints here and i will take some uh, ratchet straps and i will strap all the way around here and that pulls this chair tight and then I will be able to do some of the final steps. All right, now you can use ratchet straps or you can use rope, whatever you're better using. Uh, as far as I've got a couple of rope tricks that I can do to make it tighten up so I'm uh, comfortable using rope. Anyway, what you wanna do is get it to where when you rock this rocking chair, that both that point and that point touch the floor at the same time. If they do not, then of course you need to try to unrack the rocking chair. And uh, right now this one's not in too bad a shape. You can notice it as it rocks. It's got a little bit of flutter to it. But once I sturdy all this up and flip it upside down, I will be able to take a, a file and smooth out those uh, bottom rockers just a little better and get it to where it's a smoother rock to it. All right, so before I put the uh, rope on there, I did put my glue in the joints here. And uh, now I've got it uh, unracked the way I wanted. Everything square with each other. And uh, these are straight in line with each other. You don't want them coming in at a V either direction. You want both of these running parallel with each other. So I've got everything the way I want it. Uh, the shadows kind of throw it off, make it look it's a little crooked, but uh, I measured it with a tape measure and everything's fine. So what I'm gonna do now is take some uh, galvanized screws, like decking screws, and run those at each one of those uh, points on this chair. And uh, now I'll be ready to put my uh, front piece across here. And once I put the front piece across, I'll be able to uh, Put the back on and we're practically done and now what i'll do is use my completed one to show you what i'm working on now i'm doing the back pieces uh, for the back rest now what you can do is you can see how this is the top of the, the rocker rocking chair of course and i skipped down about an inch and a half on this particular model you can come up to the full height or you can cut them off right there at the log whatever you want to do so uh, that's kind of what I'm working with on this uh, rocking chair that I'm building here. I'm trying to decide what I want to do, whether I want it to end up here at the top of this log. And I kind of think that's what I want to go with, maybe making a his and hers. And uh, at one point I thought about maybe making one of them where it's flush across the top here. And then maybe making the next one where it sits up high like that and uh this would be the hers model and that would be the his but anyway i'll see how it kind of turns out and uh, see if i like that style or not i may make them both the same way i am making two rocking chairs i didn't know if i told y'all that to start with or not all right now what i'm going to do is i've got a uh, log here that's right at 26 inches long and i am going to split it right up the center here all the way down on this table saw all right well you can see that i got the log split in half so now what i want to do is i want to cut off an edge off of here like i said i'm building two of these uh i'm making a matching pair so uh anyway what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut off this edge here and that will leave just this strip down through here and uh this will be the last piece we got to cut and this last piece that i just cut up on the saw table I measured from this point here to the top of this point and that is 13 and a half and I have nailed it down with my air gun and now I'm going to drill some holes through here and I am going to uh, screw it through with a lag bolt. All right now you can see everything in place here. This is where the uh, seat will go. It will lay across here and screw up under the back bottom there. What I like to do here is I like to take my draw knife 
before I put this seat in, and that way I can stand inside here and straddle this chair if I need to. But what I want to do is I want to draw off this bark along the top edge here to give a smooth surface as you're uh, sitting down with your arm rested on here. And if you're wondering how do I keep the rocking chair from fighting me, I just put a log up under the uh, rockers up under there and that works as a break. And that kind of keeps it from wrestling with me as I'm trying to uh, draw the bark off of these arms. Yeah, you can see that I have uh, put my strips down here. This is the seat part. Kind of hard to tell out here in the shop. I don't have the greatest lighting. I use all natural lighting, just sunlight. So uh, I've used a brad nailer and I've just nailed these down on the front side. And now what I'll do is flip the rocking chair upside down. All right, now that I got the rocking chair upside down, now I can take these pieces and bend them down to the uh, to the log here and uh, nail them down with a brad nailer. And then I will come back and put a screw through there just to ensure that they uh, hold in real good. And we're still looking at the rocking chair upside down. This is the front side of the rocker. This is where your legs would be right here. And what I have done is cut a piece that what I'm wanting to do is put along here and mount it so that it gives support to keep these legs from wanting to bow in or outward. So uh, I'll make some cross bracing to go here and here. And then I will also make some that go back through here. And as I stand the rocker up in a moment, you'll be able to tell what I'm talking about. And again, the uh, rocking chair is still upside down. So I uh, just cut a little bracing piece to put right in here. That goes between the armrest and the back support. And uh, that'll help keep this thing really sturdy. You'd be amazed how just that little piece right there and these two little pieces going across here, how much they really impact this rocking chair as to how sturdy it will become. All right, so I'm going to give you the dimensions that I used on this rocking chair. But let me rem remind you that a lot of these dimensions will change varying upon how thick each particular log is. And it will also change depending on how far you put the tenon into uh, each log. So if I were to say that this this arm here is right at 20 and a half inches, that's only to the face of it because there's about an inch and a half into here. So again, this arm is uh, facing 20 and a half. And uh, this entire log here is right at 38 inches. And the one on the front leg, that one is 20 and a half. And again, here is another one that would definitely change depending on the uh, thickness of the logs, but it's 26 inches. And let's see what the uh, support for the bottom and back is 19 and a half. And this back support is also 19 and a half. The back rest, I've got that right at 22 inches. And the bottom is 20 and 3 quarters. And let's see, this support here, I've got it right at 10 inches. And this one here. That one is also right at 10 inches. So there you go. Like I say, the best thing to do is just take another rocking chair, lay it out on a piece of plywood, do your outline of it, and uh, use that outline as a guide. You either, when you make your outline, you either want to stay on the outside of the rocking chair or the inside. If you go all the way around the exterior perimeter of the rocking chair, to me that's the best way to go. And once you use that exterior line as your guide, 
then uh, hey, you can't go wrong. And these rocking chairs that I made today, uh, again, I used sweet gum for the log and I used uh, cherry for the uh, for the bottom and the back support or uh, rest area. And this one here I made uh, somewhere around seven, eight years ago it was one of the first ones I ever made. And uh, again, this one's made of sweet gum and also uh, cherry. Now what I changed about the uh, newer model is this right here. So now my new model, I have uh, I go into here with the ton the uh, tenon and uh, instead of putting these little brackets on here, it's a little metal bracket is what I was using before. So either way it holds up good, but I think the new system looks a little bit better. And there you have what the new system looks like. Well, I got one heck of a mess to clean up in this shop. Look at all this sawdust everywhere and shavings. But uh, hey, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you would give me a like and subscribe. As of today's date, I do not make any money on YouTube. I just did this for uh, my pleasure and yours as well. And it sure would please me if you would uh, hit the like and subscribe. Give me some feedback down in the comment section below. Thanks again, folks. Y'all have a great day and good luck making your rocking chair.